Hello everyone, and welcome back to my Asteroid Defense series in Kerbal Space Program 0.23.5. And in the previous episode, we of course let Jeb bring in an asteroid into Kerbin Polar Orbit. And that's the one you see there, though it didn't get renamed to what I told it to be, which is irritating. But anyway, uh, we don't expect any more hazardous asteroids to come in for the next 16 days and that's enough time warping to get us in position to a jewel encounter so that's what I'm going to do first. I'm going to time warp until we get to the point where we need to launch those missions. Very carefully. Time warping must always done, be done carefully. Okay, let's... well, how about a little bit longer? Let's make sure the KSC is on the daylight side. Mm, and it's not. Okay. Alright. Now, I don't want to just launch a single mission into uh, to Jewel. Jewel encounters don't grow on trees, so we will want to launch more than one at this point and take advantage of the proper location. Oh, and we're not really that far off from a Duna transfer either. I know it's in 10 days, but we could probably transfer now and still make it work. Um, let's get a lot of stuff into orbit. But anyway, I, I've got something special in mind for the first thing, so let's go to the space plane hangar and see what I've got cooked up. Now as far as airplane parts we really don't have much to work with. Uh, we, we've we got this engine but we don't have the uh, ramjet style engines that are more appropriate for higher altitudes so this is the only engine we've got and also we are lacking uh, some of the better refinements in terms of wings. We don't have delta wing for instance nor the wing connector so that's a little bit of a problem but we do have standard control surfaces but yeah so we're lacking some of the amenities and what I've cooked up with may look a little bit bizarre and inelegant but given our limited parts it will work and here it is it is a probe control uh, well it's a probe controlled probe launcher this center piece is the probe uh, except uh, it will use this portion to get into orbit and this is the probe itself. So this is the probe that's boosting into orbit and the rest of this is just to get to a decent altitude before launching it. In theory this the rest of this could return and in fact it has parachutes just in case we wanted to retrieve it. But we're not going to be able to simulate that part of it in this episode, well, in this series, because we don't have the necessary mods to simulate the return of this while also getting the probe to orbit. But yeah, so there's a probe, and you'll have to forgive me for not building it on camera, because it took a little bit of fiddling. And so, actually one is the solar panels, I'm just trying to remember what some of this stuff is. And that's good. You can see the center mass and center to lift here. And we'll try this out. This could work well, it could work badly. Um, yeah. Oh, by the way, it's probe launcher Y because of the configuration. You can see it's sort of a Y shape there. Okay, let's, let's try this out. Let me explain our goal with this, by the way. Our goal is to send it to either uh, Duna or Lathe and get a barometer reading. That's really all it could carry and maybe a thermometer reading there and then transmit those results back to back to uh, Kerbin. Where is our transmitter? But Oh there we go. We've got a commutatron there. So that can transmit the data and so that's the goal of this particular probe and we'll see what we have the Delta V to do with it once we get up there. I uh, only put a portion of the mod propellant in... Oh no, there's an empty mod propellant tank up here, that's what it is. That was just to smooth out the lines a bit. 
Okay, so throttle up, SAS on. SAS might not be happy with this whole thing, but we'll see. Okay, let's go. Up we get. Gear up. Okay, we better start angling further up. Alright, well that part works. Oh yeah, I didn't fill up the jet fuel in here, obviously no point to. Uh, it just needs to get us up to the prescribed altitude and presumably also get back down. But we won't, we didn't need the full tanks for that. These are structural parts, so nothing in them. I did add lights uh, so that it could be possible to do a night launch with this. Uh, the lights are only on the carrier though. So my expectation is to get around 15,000 kilometers. Obviously we don't have the engines that could really get us higher. So best bet is 15,000 kilometers and then release the probe. Oh, which reminds me I should uh, tell it to control from here. Where is the probe? I built this whole thing around that part. But really, we need to control from here, otherwise when it decouples, we'll follow the carrier instead of the probe. And the time it takes me to switch to the probe will actually be too long and hinder our ability to get into orbit. So strange as it looks, this will be our first interplanetary mission but not the only one that I intend to do in this interval like I said we gotta launch a few rockets over to Jewel and perhaps to Duna Unfortunately, with these engines, of course, they're rapidly losing thrust and efficiency as we get higher. Okay, looking good. Just want to get to 15,000 meters, 15,000 meters, and then I'll be satisfied. Intake air is not really the issue. We're fine on that. It's really whether we can keep going up and increasing speed. Okay, I think uh, we are close to where we need to detach. You can see it's angled up pretty severely. And if we expect anything more from it, it's just going to be uh, going at a ever greater angle of attack. So, alright, and... Well, I guess we could wait until 16 kilometers. Let's level out a little bit more though. Okay, let's go. And we continue. Key is to really make sure that I get into orbit on this stage. Okay, I think uh, we should take a look at our situation here. Nice high orbit there. Let's just add a maneuver node to finish that up. We'll probably just expend this stage, see how far we get with it.
Okay, let's finish this off. Well, that's Orbit. I guess we can have the rest of this tag along for a bit. Let me extend solar panels, though. Ah, only one got action grouped. Oh no, there's only one, that's right. There's two of the ones that are always open. Yeah, there's only one, so that's by design. Okay, that's good enough. Now, lots of stuff going on. Let's see where we can boost to. Let's let's say we were to well, I mean, Duna is not so interesting for asteroid purposes because it's really Ike that we were looking at. So let's say let's set the target as Jewel. How much will that cost? Not more than that. Oops, something along those lines. We really want a lathe encounter because that's got the atmosphere that we want to we want to investigate if there are other life forms in our system. So we want to. So here's a jewel encounter. Would like a lathe encounter, but let's see how close can we get the jewel encounter. Uh, it's not that close. Let's adjust inclination a bit. Maybe the wrong time to adjust inclination. Let's say we do an inclination adjustment here at the descending node. How much would that cost? Come on, Lathe Encounter. Lathe always wants to mess with us, why wouldn't it want to mess with us this time? Well, it looks like we're not coming in quite at the right time for that Lathe Encounter. We'll see about that. Okay, well that's definitely close enough to Jewel. How much will that cost me over there? 190. So, let's call it 2200 and let's see how much Delta V this thing has. Not including this stage, let's say. Let's just say this portion. I forget how much... Okay, so that's 10, 10, 10, 40 there. Oh, I guess we could just calculate based on this. And... Well, no we can't. How much? Well, we can if we subtract out this amount. All right, let me calculate her out. 0.5. Subtract that. Divide by 90. So we've got 0.76 tons of fuel. We can dump. That's a one-ton engine, roughly. I'm gonna say we can dump 1.5 tons. So 2.3 tons left. I'm being very conservative here. So... Okay, that's good. And this engine has an ISP. I think it has an ISP of 350. So 350 times that times 9.81. Nah, it doesn't look like we have enough to get to Joule. I think we've got about 1,400. I might be underestimating. Well, I'm definitely underestimating because we've got a little bit of this one. And I'm probably overestimating the mass of this. And we also have the monopropellant. So in theory, we might have been able to get to Jewel, but let's see if uh, 1,400 will be enough to get to Duna. And we'll do an atmospheric reading on Duna. That'll be an interesting thing to do anyway. Let's 
target Duna. This is not quite the right time for Duna, but it's close. And as you can see, it doesn't cost quite as much. Let's make sure our outbound trajectory is aligned. So again, you want to align the yellow dot line with the, or orange if you'd like, with the purple one. Except the when you're not going at the right time, you need to tweak it a little bit. So maybe going a little bit askew would be good. Okay, Duna Periapsis, and not a bad one. Uh, though we could tweak it just a little bit. Oh, not that much. Yeah. Not happy with that. Okay, well we'll just go with this for now. And we'll send it on its way to Duna. Sounds like a good plan. Right, I think we'll probably need a few minutes for this sort of burn, but maybe not quite so long. Alright. Yep, let's get this guy over to Duna. Oh, it doesn't take long at all. This thing's pretty... pretty vigorous. So this is basically going to be a crasher, because eventually uh, we're going to dip it into the atmosphere of Duna, get the barometer and temperature reading, transmit those back, and let this crash into Duna. That's the, that's the goal here. Actually, this thing could probably get, have gotten to Jewel. You know what? Why don't we launch another one over to Jewel? I like this system. Nope, that's making things worse. Okay, let's use RCS to back off from that. We've got lots of RCS. Well, okay, not that much. But oh. making me annoyed. Okay, RCS is leaking. Let's not do that. Let's try and come up with another burn to fix this. Probably is because we completed the burn early, as you can see. We, Well, actually that doesn't indicate the current. Okay, anyway. But yeah, we completed the burn early. Okay, that doesn't work. Really doesn't work. Okay, I'm not really seeing much help here. 121 is as close as it wants to get me. We've got fuel. What we don't have is a very good trajectory. Hmm. Oh. That would cost quite a lot. <laughs> Uh, okay, well, best thing to do might be to correct it on the mid-course burn then. Ooh, a Duna encounter and an Ike encounter. Do we want to go there? But the Ike encounter is after the Duna encounter. I don't know if that's something we should do. I think the plan... Well, let's, let's get uh, close. This should be pretty close. So we'll leave it at that and it'll keep our little intended maneuver node for this mission. And let's launch one more towards Jewel. And then maybe I'll save more substantial missions, and the dual one will attempt to encounter Lathe. 
and then we'll save more substantial jewel missions for the next episode and I think we might even want to launch some Kerbals at Jewel. We'll see. But uh, let me get one or more of these little probe launchers out and this time aim it at Jewel. So here we go, another one of these things. And sorry for launching two of the same thing in the same episode, but it, it works. So <laughs> I'm, I'm somewhat surprised it worked quite so well. And I really am curious to see where this can get to get its probe over to Jewel. I hope you are too. So off we go. Oh, by the way, just to clarify, there part clipping was not on. I just. Uh, if you turn off the angle snap symmetry and uh, it'll let you do these angles even without uh, any sort of um, part clipping. So this was not the result of part clipping, it's just a result of taking angle snap off and a little bit messy on my part, but it's a little bit hard to get it all lined up quite right. So yeah, that's that. And it looks like we're sort of missing a strut on this side. Uh, this strut didn't connect for some reason. Hmm. Seems like we went up a little bit better than uh, this time. I got, I think I got the profile a little bit better. Took a little bit more intake air perhaps, but got to 15 kilometers quicker. Whoa, 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 come on. I sense a little bit of instability here. Oh yes. Okay, time to decouple. Definitely. Oh no. I forgot to... Okay, see, that's what happens. <laughs> I forgot to control from this probe part. Uh, I hope we didn't lose too much juice with that. And this is the mission that we really needed the juice. So, yeah, I had to... I forgot to control from here, right? That's probably going to cause us a little bit of a problem. Let me try and get into a lower orbit then. Not uh, 150 kilometers this time. Okay, that should do, though we're still losing altitude, I mean apoapsis altitude, because we're in the atmosphere. Maybe a little bit more burn should be done. Though we're definitely on a less efficient path here. Maybe we can, let's see, where are we? Not really. I was thinking maybe we could burn straight out. Let's see. Let's say we do, uh, well, probably we'll need to get into orbit anyway. But let's say we do a short orbit. Yeah. And then try and boost out to Jewel. Just that one. Okay. Jewel encounter. Not quite the right timing though. Maybe... That was a, that was a quick encounter, not the one I was looking for. 
I want the efficient encounter. Okay, that should be good. How much will it cost me? Nineteen thirty eight, wow. Well that's about the same though, once we get through this burn. We'll see. Uh, I think uh this one was better bed for Duna and the other one could have probably made it to Jewel. Okay, and how much will the mid-course change take? Okay, that's good. 183. Alright. Let's try for that. Get our solar panel out. Okay, this should be a pretty long burn, though this did burn very quickly. We'll see. Okay, yeah, it will burn quickly. Try to get this as accurate as possible. Okay, let's hope that's good enough. And... Jewel periapsis 30. Wait... Tylo encounter. No, I don't think Tylo has an atmosphere that we would be interested. Jewel periapsis 1... 100... I mean, uh, 1,151 kilometers. That's good. And the other one is actually the one we're on right now. So, that'll be satisfactory. I think uh, we'll, we will have to wait 23 days, and that means we'll have to deal with some asteroid business before we get to do that burn, but it will retain that maneuver for us when we do have to do it. And so, we can be content that our probe is on its way to Jewel, with some fuel left for the burn, as you can see, and mod propellant besides that, so that it can maneuver once it gets to the Jewel system. So. We've got two interplanetary probes, very small ones, just with a barometer and a thermometer. In the next uh, episode, we'll aim to launch some goo containers, some science juniors, and maybe even a crewed mission, though that might have to wait for a subsequent episode. But we'll try and do as much as possible, and on the principle of not putting all of our eggs in one basket. It will take a little bit of management on my part, but uh, hopefully spreading our science uh, science experiments among many launches will help to ensure that we do get some of it back some of the information back so on that note thank you for watching if you enjoyed this video please do press like if you have any comments suggestions please leave them in the comment section below and I'll see you next time